Hello everybody, welcome back to another Fin Me Up weekly stock watch where we cover the most important JSC and US news that happened during the week whether it's directors dealings, companies results, news, whatever it might be so all summarized with extra insights Thanks for watching again uh, Please consider liking and subscribing It really goes a long way to help support this channel Check the links in the description You can book a call with Paul here uh, You can get some free consultation with him uh, and check the rest of the links in the description. Keep that quest streak going on the FinMeUp app. So, uh, quite interesting results these week, this week. Uh, the first one is Caxton. So, Paul, I know you cover Caxton qu quite often. So, I'll just run through the basic results. Revenues grew strongly by 25.8%. Uh, profit from operating activities after depreciation and amortization increased by 39.8%. Earnings per share increased by 63.9% and an increase of 36.4% uh, in headline earnings per share. You know, these were solid results for a company that is not expensive. If you look at their cash balance, it's also very close to their market cap. Uh, you know, they've, they've got quite a lot of cash in the bank. Uh, but Paul, over to you to cover Caxton. Before that, uh, for the listeners, if you want us to cover Caxton in detail on a YouTube interview, let us know in the comments. That way we'll know, uh, you know if you are interested in this company. If not Caxton, let us know which company would like to do a specific company, analyze the company from top to bottom and uh, yeah, give you some insights. So let us know which company you want us to research on the JSE. Paul, what do you think of these Caxton results? Yeah, happy shell. There you go. Very, very happy. Of course, uh, Caxton is one of my top five picks for the year. And I believe that investors who are willing to be patient will see, I can easily see a proper 50 to 100 percent increase in Caxton over the next 18 to 24 four months. So I'm holding on and let's hope for the best. So for those of you who don't know, Caxton owns uh, over 100 local newspapers, like for the rural areas. In Afrikaans, we would say, Klein Dorpi Kurante. And many of the retailers like ShopRite will advertise in, in these, um, you know, local newspapers with the latest special. You know, the more privileged people of South Africa, like, of course, we live in a bubble. We just use airtime data, go on the internet, search, you know, latest special, superbulous, take lot. We have all of these tools. But for the most part of South Africa, they don't, they don't have that. So you get your, you know, your weekly free newspaper, you read it, you look for the latest deals and off you go. That's, that's kind of the vibe. Um, so, yeah, so, so I'm very bullish. Then the stake in impact or M impact, like you said, impact is pretty significant. Their cash plus uh, impacts uh, cash is about 75% of their market cap. Now, that's actually insane. That's without even considering the rest of the assets. Your cash alone is almost your market cap, like you said. That's, that's crazy to me. So I believe that the company is very undervalued. The downside or my, my, I can say my, my, my one concern here is the clash between uh, Caxton and Impact. Caxton owns about 35% of Impact and they're looking to acquire the rest of the shares. Long story short, short, there's been a little bit of a tussle between the two companies. I'm just concerned that they will pay a lot more for Impact eventually than the intrinsic value of Impact. And of course, you never want to see a company paying too much for something relative to the, the actual value. I would like to see that they continue to make small acquisitions like they've been doing. Like they've recently acquired a little pulp company that's doing very well. And now the big news is they also started supplying to KFC. That's moved from uh, like foam to carton packaging. So that's massive. I mean, that's, that's a massive retailer in the fast food industry. So very bullish. Let's see what happens. Yeah, well, that's the, the last point is very interesting. I mean, I also nibbled at Caxton after these results when it was around nine rand. Uh, so, you know, up a little bit, but I'm going to continue holding this one because the other thing that really excites me, uh, you know, I haven't covered Caxton in too much detail, but, you know, just from a basic point of view is the move to paper. You know, there's this massive movement, get away from plastic, get into paper. If you look at packaging, so that's the one side, packaging for e-commerce. E-commerce is constantly increasing. More and more people are shopping online, uh, you know, whether it's uh, Uber Eats, whatever it might be, and that uses paper, okay? So that's the one side. The other side is everything that is plastic is trying to move towards paper. Um, and, and there's so many facets of paper that is actually exciting. It's very boring, but it's also exciting. Um, you know, and, and the PE is around five or six, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, like you said, 
the cash with uh, impact will, will cover around 75 percent of the market cap um you know there are the the downside risks that you mentioned but definitely going to keep an eye on this one the next one not paper at all and that is mirafe resources revenue decreased by two percent ebitda decreased by 12 percent net cash generated from operating activities increased to 1.7 billion rand cash balance of one point around 1.3 billion rand Final cash dividend of 13 cents per share declared. So for the dividend lovers, there's something for you. And the ferro crow production increased by 1%. Paul, I know you've written a stock pick on Mirafe uh, on the FinMap app. What it, you know, it's interesting when you look at the company at first sight, the PE ratio is extremely low, um, like really low. I think it's two or, or below three. Um, so I'll, I'll leave this one to you as well since you've covered them. Let us know what do you think of these results. Awesome, thank you, Igor. Yeah, so for, for quickly for the listeners and the viewers, Marafe, they have a joint venture with Glencore, and they're the world's largest producer of ferrochrome. And ferrochrome is used in stainless steel. And of course, we all know stainless steel, uh, it's, a, it's very, very popular, and especially a massive demand coming from China. Right, so, 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 so the products or the prospects for Marafe is heavily dependent on China. Um, they, are, they use it for everything, cutlery, the build uh, buildings, vehicles, literally everything. Now, the 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 the, the performance of Marafe is a function of the price of ferrochrome, which is of course at the moment doing pretty well. In 20, 2020, we saw you know, pretty pretty solid prices. Twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two, and even now in twenty twenty three. So that's not a problem. China as well now is opening up the economy again, so that's also bullish. So the quantity and the price both are you know in in place. The big problem for Marafe is the operational cost in South Africa. Uh, the biggest input by far is electricity for this company. It's like a massive smelter. Uh, this smelter that turns the chrome into ferrochrome uses an insane amount of electricity, and we all know the problem at the moment. So not only do we have spike in, uh, spikes in electricity prices, but we all, also don't always have electricity. So I'm, uh, I'm a little bit concerned for, for Marafi at, at this stage. Um, I do like the company. I've made quite quite a bit of money on this company, but at the moment, once again, load shedding is a concern, and I think I'll be sitting on the sidelines for now until this is resolved. Transaction capital. So for those who commented last week, thank you for that. Uh, the end result is that transaction capital is up uh, f- from last week. So there's a, probably a few faces that are smiling more than grumpy this week. Uh, but the acquisition of the additional 15% stake in Weibo cars will be affected. Uh, you know, that's just with everything that happened, you know, something had to give. On March 20th, a director purchased around 1.1 uh, million rands worth of shares. On March 22nd, another uh, directors or directors together purchased around 17.5 million rands worth of shares. If not mistaken, that was the founders. So there's definitely some confident uh, confidence from the management team in the company and the recovery. Um, I listened to an interview of the CEO just clarifying some of his sale agreements, um, you know, also stating that it, it, it could be an overreaction, the, the share price. And, you know, they already started with strategy changes in the, um, the SA taxi section. We buy cars, you know, all of that. There's, they, they are still sitting in, on good businesses, but there's just so many things happening. Uh, personally, I took a little bit of a punt at around 12 rands uh, per share, but it's, it's not for the medium to long term. I'll, I'll probably sell it 16 rand. Um, if, it, if it gets to that, but you know, there's definitely a sign of the management team that are really now you could see that, you know, they've got a reputation to maintain the management, um, you know, cause they've over the years, they've built up such a reputation that, you know, they are an excellent management team and I'm sure, you know, as we all are, we want to prove something, you know, to, to our shareholders and to those watching us. And I'm sure the management could probably pull a rabbit out of that, but they, it's definitely going to require some work. But, you know, they are implementing strategy changes for SA Taxi. Um, we buy cars, it's still a good business. Um, you know, the, the car prices will probably change in the, over the next few years again. Um, quite interesting to watch. Any additional comments from your side, Paul? You go, yeah, what an interesting uh, sequence of events. Uh, this is probably the biggest news on the JSE last week. Um, of course, the, the main catalyst for the, the big dump was the director selling and also SA Taxi. SA Taxi is in big trouble. We've got massive bad debts and there's a chance that the business won't make it. But I think management, you know, will pull through. I don't, I can't see this business like really going down or going under. Um, so just for the viewers, they were 35 rand at the beginning of the year. 
they've dumped all the way to eight rand fifty, and now they're back up to thirteen rand fifty. So that's a fifty percent uh, increase from the lows of the lows. Who knows where this thing is going? Uh, I predict that we will actually see it go a little bit higher, but then somewhere it will plateau until new sets of results uh, are released to see you know, what is happening to SA Taxi. So it's all about SA Taxi at this moment. Can SA Taxi actually turn it around? If not, we might see you know low levels for this company for the foreseeable future. Yeah, look, at the moment, it's a bit of a trade. It's a bit of a punt. Um, you, you know, it's, it's also a sign that you back the management but now we need to see whether they execute on these new strategy changes um, and the structural changes. Anyway, two trading statements, one from York Timber, Anthony Clark covers this company. There is, uh, I think, two stock picks from Anthony Clark, also known as Small Talk Daily, on the FinMap app on York Timber. So you can just search for that. Earnings per share is expected to be between, uh, well, a, a, a decrease of between 28 and 33%. Master drilling, well, once the full results are out, we'll uh, give you some more insights. Master drilling, a company that I own and continue to follow, earnings per share is expected to increase between 17.4 and 27.4%, which is a positive increase. This is looking good. The company is sitting at a PE ratio of 4 or 5. They've got a massive moat. Uh, but more on master drilling with lots of insights from Keith McLaughlin. Check the video in the link in the description where that was one of his five stock picks, which we covered last week. Remgro, uh, earnings per share fell by 19.7%. Headline earnings grew by 5.7%. Uh, in, intrinsic net asset value per share was two, 223 Rand, up from 213 Rand. Um, you know, Remgro is not the, the, a company that I cover deeply. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of certain holding companies. Um, but, you know, as we know, over the years, they've built an amazing reputation. Do you have any comments on Remgro, Paul? Yeah, well... Once again, you go. You know me. I'm not a holding company kind of uh, investor, and and one of the big reasons I'm not a fan is the following. If you look down in the results, it says the net asset value uh, is is down forty percent, or it's trading at a forty percent discount to to intrinsic net asset value. That's the share price now. So that means that all the companies, the the, the sum of parts. If you add all the individual companies together. Uh, then they let's say they're 100 rand. Now the REM growth trade is trading at 60 rand, so it's 40% discount. Of course, that will always be the case because if it was more, then you could just buy the individual shares. So it has to be less. It's a, it's a company basically adding all of these shares um, together and then managing them and seeing, okay, can we actually make a profit here? And I'm not, just not convinced. 40%. So what is, what is the norm is what I'm asking. Is it, is it supposed to be 40% discount? Is it supposed to be 20% discount or 10% discount? So personally, I never really know how exactly to value these holding companies. And that makes it a little bit difficult for me. One guy might say 40%. That's a no-brainer. Let's buy into this company. And another guy would say that's, industry, uh, you know, that's a norm. I just buy the individual companies that I like within the holding company. So Rembro, they've done amazing. I'm a fan, of course, but I won't invest into this company well you know they're all sitting on some amazing assets as well um, there's some assets that I'm, I'm not a big fan of but then there's some assets that i really like and it, what we saw with psg about a year and a half ago was when they announced the unbundling of their shares so they were also trading at a, a big discount to net asset value so you're buying the shares for cheaper basically but the big question is will that discount ever be unlocked a great way to unlock is to unbundle companies um you know the, but it, it's just difficult to, to, to value these companies. Um, but Remgro, you know, they have a solid management team. They are sitting on, on great assets. Um, they are trading at a big discount, discount to net asset value. But the question is, will that ever be realized? Uh, that's something we'll have to watch. Let us know in the comments, do you want us to cover Caxton uh, or any other company on JC in detail? Uh, remember, these are just quick insights covering the most important highlights of the week. So if there's a specific, specific company you want us to cover, let us know in the comments. And if you want to book a call with Paul, remember you can do that in the link in the description and ask him your financial questions. Thanks for watching. Consider liking and subscribing. I hope you have a great weekend. Cheers.